So good morning, everyone. My name is Sumner Frizzell. I'm the Events and Program Specialist with BC Food and Beverage. So happy to have all of you on here with us this morning for a, another great session with uh, Phil and Kenny. We're really looking forward to hearing um, what they have to say today and the important information that they're going to share with all of you. And then also just a um, quick reminder that next week we do have our uh, award tickets going on sale. So make sure that you pay attention to that. We're hosting our uh, RISE Awards on November 28th, and it's going to be another fabulous evening celebrating the food and beverage industry. So make sure to, uh, yeah, look out for that. And on that note, I will leave it to Phil and Penny. Take it away. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Um, cool. Hi, guys. Thanks. Thanks for having us. Um, thanks for joining us. Uh, let me just get set up here. So I got all this stuff right. I'm going to share my screen. Share that one. Let's go and present. So I got that up. I got you guys in the corner. Sorry, I am. Um, Zoom is like the only application that I talk to myself when I set it up. But it's almost like the only way I can I can kind of do that and make sure I got all of the chat windows and everything set up. Um, okay, um, so thanks for joining us today. We are going to talk to you about how to get the most out of your broker slash distributor. Um, we're pretty excited to do this with you guys. Um, we think this is um, just one of these topics that's just so critically important to get right. Um, if you are a brand that has either a broker or a distributor or thinking about it, this is probably one of those relationships that, um, you know, there's so many potholes and we've heard so many stories about how this is right or wrong. And then, but th they're probably one of the most critical relationships you could possibly have. So, um, so we're excited to have the conversation with you and, um, and um, see if we can answer any questions you have. Um, uh, apologize. That's my dog. She always waits until we're absolutely on a webinar um, for, for her to kind of make herself known. But um, this is, uh, so thank you to BC Food and Bev for doing this as well. Um, you know, uh, you guys are going to get a handout. So we left kind of all the questions that we're going to answer here as well, um, so that when you get the handout, you'll, you'll actually have that as well. Um, a little bit, if you haven't met us, um, um, Phil and Kenny were in the corner there, um, you know, and uh, we kind of do a bunch of things, right? So we have a podcast that um, we, we're just about to drop episode 381. Um, they're all Canadian, you know, founders, Canadian retailers, Canadian service providers. We love um, this Canadian space and, and what people are doing in the retail space. So we're super excited. Um, the other things that we do, we also do a lot of retail insights, things like this, like the webinars and things like this. We do this across the country. And then obviously sometimes when we talk, we stir up anxiety or we raise questions that you need more answers to, or you need help with. If you need that, um, you can come find us as well. We, we, um, do do this for a living. We're happy to help. Um, and, uh, we sound expensive, but we're actually not. Um, so, um, Anyway, okay, so that's us. Um, that's this commerce life. Um, now we're gonna do a few things. We're we're gonna we're gonna okay. walk through what is a broker and what is a distributor. Um, we'll kind of give you some definitions, and then we'll we'll kind of go from like slow to fast fairly quickly. Um, one of the things that we'll you know we're conscious of is the group and some of the names are I'm familiar with. Some of them are I am not. Um, you're all going to need different things. Um, and so we're quite conscious that we're, we're going to try and cover, we're going to scatter shot and try and cover a bunch of fundamentals here. And so I think, um, you know, either use the meeting chat or, um, you know, or, or just sound off and, and make sure that we try and cover the questions that you need us to cover. Um, okay. Um, Kenny, I'm I think missing if, if anybody knows us, I, I think, cause Phil and I've talked about this is at times, you get such a diverse group in here. Some mm -hmm. may already know all this and you're going to sit there and think, well, shit, I don't need to know this. Probably true. Um, we are not so hung up about or worried about getting through slides or the presentation per se. There's obviously yeah. a script here, but we are very comfortable in an off script world. So if some of the stuff is too basic, if some of the stuff is not basic enough, stop us, ask us, don't worry about 
you know, massive protocols or anything like that. We're pretty fluid in what we do. So I, I just want to make sure we understand that because to, it, this is one of those discussion topics that we could have 21 people in the room and 22 people, 22 different levels of experience. So that's right. it's it's that's really right. one of those. So please, this is for you guys, not so much for us. So if there's if it's too basic and you have some more complicated ask, if it's too complicated, you have some more basic ask, make this more about you than about him and I trying to get through slides. And, and anyone who actually knows us will know that if we have a script, we, we're probably going to follow We're not going to follow it anyway. Pretty quick. So, um, so anyway. Anyway, Kenny, do you want to pick it up? Do you want to cover what brokers and distributors are? I think it's just it's, it's to make sure that, yeah, for sure. I think for most part, it's just very basically to make sure you don't, um, in essence, sort of mix up the two. A lot of people will use them interchangeably and they're really not a broker. Like in my head is really uh, just right to the bottom. It's sort of your contract the salesperson slash sales team. These are the people that will go out to most of the accounts, whether they're DSD small local or to your majors like the save ons because I'm in BC obviously we all are well except Phil um, you know your biggers like your majors like Georgia mains and things they will be the ones who represent you and the brand from a sales perspective for the most part the distributor in essence is really your box mover plain and simple they may have a sales team they may act as a, a broker but for the most part I think the distinction we try to make a broker is sort of your sales your salesperson or sales team, depending on what you need, and your distributor is really your warehouse slash your box mover. Even though sometimes they can kind of work together, work apart, to me, that's sort of what it is. So when we're talking about a broker, sales team, distributor, box mover, that's, I think, the crux or the, the easiest way to go through this. You've got the clicker thingy. I do. Um so, so one notice, we, we are going to use that term broker slash distributor because it, for the purposes of this presentation, it's easier for us to combine yeah. these two. Um, but as Kenny said, they're, they're really, they're not the same thing. Um, and then, and then obviously you've got some um, that will confuse or conflate the two terms. Like you, you, it is common for distributors to have some sales reps as well. Um, that will help them move boxes and sell some stuff as well. And so we we use broker slash distributor to kind of um, to summarize this term. But I think when you see these moments, um, you should take it from your point of view of what do I think I need or, um, you know, what is it that I'm I'm after, if that makes sense. Okay. And if I'm sure, ask. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to spend a little bit of time of getting clear on what you want. Um, you know, knowing what you need is a key part of the discussion. So for anyone who's um, starting up conversations with brokers slash distributors, um, I, I'm going to use an example from a brand that, that we know quite well. Um, and um, when she started going out to talk to people, what we heard a lot of was, oh, I had this really great conversation. I'm thinking about these guys. And we would keep coming back to the same thing as, look, these guys are all relationship builders. They know how to build relationships. But um, before you go and form a relationship with someone um, beyond, you know, kind of being friendly and having a contact, if, if you want to form a relationship, you need to be really clear on what it is that you are after. Um, because brokers and distributors, you know, half of their lives is spent um, talking to retailers and, and helping you move boxes. The other half is partnering with brands. So every broker slash distributor that you talk to will be a good conversation to have, but not all of them will fit. And the only way you know whether they fit or not is to be clear on what you need versus what they do. Um. So, you know, we're going to ask a bunch of questions here. We're going to talk our way through these, um, you know, and then and then I think all of the slides after this, um, we're going to ask a bunch of questions. If you've got a notepad or something like that, um, you know, maybe start jotting down some of your answers. So if anyone is looking for a broker or a distributor or trying to figure which one is which, some of the questions we ask are basic. We'll ask you a bunch of advanced questions too. All of them are designed to help you kind of polarize to where do you want to be? What do you want to do? Um, you know, those sort of things. Okay. So um, some really basic questions that we have here. Um, 
we have some key assumptions on the side that we just want you to pay attention um, to right away before you start asking your, your questions, right? One is assume that you will care more about your business than anyone ever will. So that sounds like a funny thing to say, um, particularly for any founders in the room, you probably already feel this, but um, we're going to reinforce that fact here is you care more about your business than anyone ever will. So anyone who comes into this, who either um, has the enthusiasm that you feel like is going to cover the business that the way you would, I, I would say, you know, flag that one a little bit because the, you know, no one, no one is going to care about it the way you do. Um, Once no keeps said repeating that is no one, clearly, no one yeah. will care more than you. And everybody will tell you that you will be the most important thing in their world. Right. There are very few brokers and very few distributors who exclusively do one brand. Right. It's clearly. So just remember yeah. that most brokers and distributors will manage anywhere between probably five and 100 brands. Right. Which, you know, multiply that by 10 SKUs per brand, pretend, you know, do the math. At that point, you can see where you become a lot less potentially important, which is why we go down these discussions. Which do you need? Who do you need? How do you pick? Right. Because there's nothing wrong with what we just said either. Maybe you don't need all the love and care and attention. You just need someone to move boxes. No problem. Mm -hmm. That's, that's all good in the hood. But I think to be very clear, I, I, Bill and I make even even when we wrote this, probably said it about tr a trillion times. Really <laughs> and truly, assume that nobody yeah. gives a shit as much as you do. Yeah, yeah. it's yours. It's yeah. not theirs. Just um, get that into your head. So a few other things, right? Um, also, if you are looking for a distributor, assume don't assume that they have a sales team. Um, no matter what they tell you, sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Sometimes they have a good one. Sometimes they don't. Um, don't assume that they, you know, don't, don't assume. Um, the other thing is don't assume that you need either a distributor or a broker, right? So when you are in business, um, people are going to ask you that all, all the time, right? Who's your distributor? Who's your broker? Um, sometimes we run into brands that go, I think I need one. Why do you need one? Because everyone asks me, who is my distributor or broker? You know what? If it doesn't fit your model, it doesn't fit your model. Okay. Um, and so don't assume that you need either because you you might come out of this answering all these questions going, you know what? All the answers point to I don't need one. So I then think I can do this one. on my own. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then also assume that they will be expensive. So AKA build this into your cost structure. Um, you will hear retail folks talk about this all the time. We all lament the number of costs, right? Because retail is a kind of crazy business and it's kind of amazing how much money flies out the door and how slow money comes in the door. Um, but assume that when you pick up a partner, distributor or broker, they are expensive. So make sure that your structure can support it. Okay. Um, and, and that's then still, before Bill goes on. I think mm -hmm. the don't assume you need neither is why that one was before the, before this one, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. the neither is because sometimes people go, well, it's cost, cost, cost. Don't assume you need neither just because of the cost. But then it became like, that's the expense part. Like, it, I just wanted to make sure you understood this. You don't necessarily need either. You don't necessarily don't need either. You may yeah. need both. It's a good you may distinction. Need both. Just yeah. make, yeah. Okay. Um, okay. And then the last one is similar to the first one, but it is different. And you'll hear, you'll hear why in a couple of slides. But assume that you are the best, you are always the best salesperson and the team you choose can only be as good as the team, um, as good as you equip them to be, okay? So particularly when you're the founder and you created the brand, you are gonna know things about the brand that nobody else does. Um, and so you're when you hire a partner of any kind, the, the ability for the partner to help you is only as strong as your ability to translate what's in your head into, into learnings that they can digest and be able to share onwards. Okay. Um, I'm constantly, there's one founder I work with and, um, you know, constantly, constantly, you know, kind of like sharing things that you go, Oh my God, is that in your head? Like what else is in your head? Right. Tell me, because that's really smart. We should be using that out on the road, but we're not because it's in your head and it's not somewhere that I can digest it. Right. So it's also, again, it's back to the assumption. Yeah. You assume that everybody yeah. knows what you know, and you assume that they all carry the same enthusiasm and concern that you do for your product 
And again, this is not to discount the broker distributor. Many are solid and really do care about you and really do care about your product. Just remember, yeah. they're probably not exclusive. You are not the only one. So it's, again, it's that sharing of what's between your ears to them so that they can do a better job for you. Okay, now, um, some basic questions we have. Some of these you're going to look at and go, really? I need to answer these. But um, and, and so if you know the answers you know, the answers. Um, if you don't, I, I would, you know, I would, I would just uh, make sure that you kind of noodle your way through them. So this is back to the um, level of where you are though, too, Phil, if you're already yeah. managing three brokers and 15 distributors and you're in both countries. Yeah. You know, they may seem like very trivial questions, That's but right. we, we never know who we get. And a, a lot of times we do have people that are just starting out or just getting into, do I need, or what do I need? And these questions do become very relevant very quickly. I know they Go sound simple Kenny. sometimes. Hit the questions, Kenny. I got to get this chat out of my hair here. Um, so one of the things, it, it does sound like we said, you know, do you want more stores to sell your product or do you want to sell more products in the stores you have? Right? Two different approaches. You know, if you just want to get into wide distribution, this is where it becomes maybe, you know what, maybe I do need some sales force help. Maybe I do need multiple places that move boxes for me. If it's more of a matter of, listen, I've, I've got some great stores. I just need more help selling into the stores or having product move out of the stores, which let's focus on that too. That is the most important part of this whole transaction is what consumers buy and what we sell into retail. Hopefully they leave retail. So it's that type of thing. And some brokers are really good at um, not only talking to head offices, but can talk to stores, um, can do different things within the store, which we'll get into pretty soon as well. Um, so, the, you know, do you want someone to sell the product for you? Again. Are you going to be the face that goes in and talk to the majors or the stores, or do you want someone to do that for you? And there may be valid reasons for both. Again, we're not here to give you the, the answer specifically because I think you need to internalize these and ask these yourself. Back to the assumptions, remember, you will always be your best salesperson and you will always care more. So, you know, pick some of them that will fit that with you. If, um, if I could make a distinction there too, Kenny, is... You know, if if you, you know, that comment about being the face to key accounts or, or to bigger accounts, um, it does take a little bit of work for you to think about what you want there. Um, there's some visionary work, right? Because if you intend on being a national brand, right, that you, you want to be everywhere at some point, um, you're going to need to deal with the majors, um, you know, one-to-one, -one, right, directly. And so... Um, in this process, you have to think about some of those things to figure out, you know, do, do I use a broker to get me introductions to the big guys so that they can, sh they, so the broker can show me how the relationship works and the broker can do the paperwork and everything. But what does that relationship look like? How do I make sure that I also can leverage that relationship to make sure that I, you know, um, a national banner knows who I am? right? Um, that they, they don't go straight to the broker to have a conversation about my brand, right? So there are a few things in there that um, you can see why some of these are are a little bit, they require some thought because you got to think about what you want your relationships to look like down the road as well. Well, since we sort of digressed there anyway, yeah. like, I think, you know, if, you, if I go back to what I used to do, if I sat there at my desk, just so we're very clear, and you're not in my stores. So I was with London for a million years. You're not in my stores. You have one brand and you ping me on an email. Just so we're very clear, you are going to be a low priority. If a regional or national broker that I'm dealing with who saves me time because they come in with 10 brands um, and make my life very easy in one meeting, if they are part of your world, I'm probably going to pick up. Not necessarily, but probably. One of the first questions I might ask you is who your broker is, who your distributor is, which may not even get you the meeting because, again, I don't need 50,000 AR points. I don't want 7,000 meetings. So, again, some of these to what Phil just sort of alluded to is, is built into that too, right? I mean, there are times where you can't be the face because I won't give you the time to make yourself the face. I will talk to the broker, but I may want to know you down the road. I just may not want to know you up front. That's right. That's right. I know so, it's a shitty game. It's just the retail is so complicated these days. It really and truly is. Okay, just, sorry, Kenny. I didn't mean to interrupt. No, Keep no, no, no. Um, and just go back to the last one because it was brought up in the chat. I mean, one of the things that, you know, what are you willing to pay and what are you able to pay for? 
there's cost to both of these. And if you haven't built it into your, your, your pricing structure, your model, they may be problematic. And if you haven't been built in to even cover them being the problematic, the fact they're not in your world is problematic, right? You, so again, it's, you know, you really need to make sure that before you go down these paths, can you afford to do this? Each is going to take percentages. Brokers probably three to 10 and a distributor anywhere from 20 to 40. That's ballparking. You know, can you do it? You can flip. Okay. So any questions so on sort of that level? Just, or anything that wants, anybody want to stop and ask there or we should just plow through? Um, Jill, I saw your question about suggestions on a good broker. Let's, let's, I'll, I'll park that. I, I didn't park lose that to it. The end. But, I saw that one too. But, but um, we'll, we'll remember to, to kind of help you out there. And if we don't well. just remind us, cause I won't remember. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'll remember, but yeah. it's all good. Um, okay. So um, some more advanced questions. So um, when you start answering these questions on the right side, a few things that we like to do that help to kind of qualify these a little bit more detailed. So we like to stay away from terms like national or cross country or Western Canada. What we want you to do is be super articulate about where you want to be, um, you know, because as you start to expand out, you should have a vision of exactly where you want to be. Is it Loblaws you want to be at? Is it um, Farm Boy? Is it you know, I want to be able to get into, you know, the Alberta co-ops, right? Calgary co-op, like um, there, there are some articulate terms that you want to be able to make so that you can kind of make your way through um, a region as opposed to, you know, geographic region, right? Because it's why on the left side, we sort of keep, we kept yeah. sort of BC centric. So if you're thinking, you know, I want to be in Western Canada, I, I don't know Western Canada is. Western Canada is, could be Vancouver Island for you and, and that's it. It could be all the That's way from right. BC to Manitoba. Be specific. I want to yeah. be, you know, in regions, I want to be all East Van. I want to be Van Island. I want to be the Kootenays, Alberta, the whole province. But I think you just need to hone it down because each has its complications and differences. Like not all brokers do the North in our province. Not all do Alberta. Not, not all do the island. Right. So, again, making sure you understand that. Make sure your brokerage covers. Not many people do outside of the lower mainland. The island, for sure, we know people do. The lower mainland, the interior, the Kootenays and Okanagan, it's dicey. The north is like, you know, I really don't know many who do the north and north well. So be very specific. I want to be in these chains. I want quality food. I want nature's fair. I want choices. It's not I want grocery. Sure, that's great. But what grocery? Does all grocery fit? Is it just Georgia, Maine? Like, can you survive with that? Is it all save on? Or Jim Patterson Food Group? Like, which parts? So I, I'm filling out the same. I don't like the terms national, cross country, Western Canada. Be specific. Tell me what you're thinking, because it'll help me. If we're helping you, it help us pick the right distributor broker. If you're doing it on your own, it helps you. No use talking to someone national who doesn't do the Quebec and Maritimes, because they are part of the national. Maybe you don't care about that. That's fine. I have no issue with that. But make sure you're picking the brokers that you understand. They're national, but their strength is there. That doesn't help you. If that's not your vision of what national means. I want Ontario, I want the GTA. I want Alberta, what does that mean? Just Calgary and Edmonton, I don't care about the rest. Fine, all good, but just be specific. Yeah, and I think I think the, um, you know, where, where that should lead you is a also a bunch of other places in that conversation, right? So it feels a bit minutia, but um, often we run into brands that, that will say, oh, I, I want to get into um, Nature's Fair or Donald's Market. Um, and then, but they're, you know, but they belong in, um, they belong in, let's say the, the, the freezer section or the fresh section, but the, the broker they're with doesn't specialize in that, right? The, the broker that they, that they work with, they only know confectionery or they only know health and beauty aisles, right? Um, you know, so, so these sort of, kind of watch outs allow you to start to narrow down into, you know, not only brokers that cover the banners that you want, but also the sections and the buyers that you're after, right? Because one of the things that brokers are very good at is they know it's a relationship thing, right? So we know the health and beauty buyer, we know the pantry buyer, we know um, the fresh or the produce buyer. But, you know, if, if you've got the wrong, if you've got the wrong broker tied into the wrong buyer, 
it's not really going to help you a lot, right? Like they, they'll have the ability to call on your buyer, but they'll have no influence there, right? So it, it or little, less Unlimited. influence there. Yeah. Limited. Yeah. So important. Um, the other things on the right side. So, um, you know, where do you want to grow? We've talked about that. Um, banners and regions you want. Um, do you have money for promotions? Um, you know, um, temporary price reductions, MCB, scan backs. As you grow promotional, um, you know, promotional oh, wow. mechanisms at retailers are important. Those things are are how you grow the business. Distribution gets you in the door. Um, you know, promotions get you out the door. It also helps to build goodwill with the retailers. So um, again, retail, like retail people, we like to bemoan how much money we spend um, on promotional dollars and things like that, but they are a part of this industry. So um, cost structure is, is important here, knowing that you can afford those sort of things. Um, you know, expansion money, quote unquote, right? So either for free fills, um, you know, for listing fees, marketing co-op flyers. Um, I have a founder I'm working with who has never worked in CPG, um, but has now um, got a product that that um, she's launched. And so when the retailer we went to work with, she said, what's this marketing co-op thing? And I said, well, okay. So it's a retailer fee. Um, it's, it's their... Um, it's their way, um, it's your contribution to their marketing fund so they can drive people to store. She says, well, I don't like that. I want, I want to opt out. And I said to her, that's very nice. Do you want to opt out? You opt out of this, they'll opt out of you. And she said, well, that's not right. And I said, no, it's not. But it's the way the, the game is played. We can go back and find out, look, what, what are you doing with my dollars? I'd like some answers. At the particular retailers she's in, they're nice enough to account for some of the dollars, um, you know, but a lot of retailers will not, right? So you, you just have to know, if I go in there, am I prepared to pay the 5%, 7%, 9% co-op fee that comes with, you know. And, and the um, reason we, we, we push these and remind you is this is on top of the 3 to 10 of the broker, on top of the 20 to 40 on the distributor. That's right. right. These are all, you know, over and above. It's like everything gets added on. So again, and then who's going to administer this? So if you have a broker and distributor, who's doing the work on this? Some brokers will do all the paperwork and will do all this for you at cost that, you know, there's a fee to it. Some distributors have the ability to do this. Not all. I mean, probably more brokers can do this than distributors, but there are distributors who can help you manage this. But again, all these questions need to be in, in your head somewhere to get the most out of both sides. Because again, I think the assumption that most take, and again, this is mostly for the new ones. I mean, there are, again, people on here, they're much more experienced and there are different levels. But if you don't answer a lot of these things ahead of time, it can be a very, very expensive, or, or it could be one of the things that cripples you in the end because you just get yeah, surprised and you don't have to be. Yeah. Just understand what you're up against. And then um, one of the things Phil and I talk about incessantly is, do you have assets, the capability to talk to retail, to consumers? Do you have the collateral? Whether what, what I don't care what that is, you know, high res pictures, you'd be surprised how hard it is to get high res pictures out of people. Do you have marketing? Do you have banners? Do you have your logos? Do you have all the other stuff and things like that, right? To make sure that you get it. Um, I think on this one, do you want someone to consolidate your AR? I, I think sometimes that's more of a question on the other side is the reason you may not get into a lot of retailers and why you might need a distributor is they might be looking to consolidate AR. They don't want 75,000 people to pay. They would rather pay one distributor for 30 brands as opposed to them now having to set up another account and another person to collect piddly ass amounts of money from. And which is sometimes another reason why you don't get into C people is because you don't have the right representation behind you, whether you could afford it or just didn't know you needed it. And then we sort of already talked about who do you want to handle or or, or manage your scan backs and MCBs. Because again, some brokers will, some distributors will. Um, you will always do all of these. So ultimately, I guess at the end of the day, it's sort of back to that. Is everything here is your responsibility. Who you pass it to and who you watch it with and who you sort of let help manage it is your business. But at the end of the day, it's all your business. All of it. Okay. Um, and then let's keep going. We've, we've got a bunch more things here. We're, we've got to get to some other things that we're going to spend a chunk of time on. 
Um, so I'm just watching the time here. So if your questions to the basic questions or the advanced questions don't match a broker distributor model, um, or two, you can't afford it. Um, all is not lost. Um, and, and it just means that your road is a different path. So again, remember that we said in the beginning, you know, maybe you don't need it, or maybe you do need it. Uh, maybe you need a variation. Maybe you need something else. So maybe what you really need at this moment is, um, you know, to be able to ask some questions of yourself, like, do you really need a whole sales force? Maybe you could do with one salesperson. Do you need a courier service instead of a broker? Um, you know, could you look at a 3PL service? Um, you know, should you just deliver your own product, right? Um, you know, in the in the days, you know, in the early founding days, lots and lots of founders deliver their own product. Um, we, we've heard from a bunch that still do it that probably shouldn't be doing it, but, um, you know, all of that is, is part of your costing and, and things that you need to think about. Um, and then the last one that, um, you know, has kind of come clear, I think, in everything that we're doing or talking about is um, if you need it and they don't fit, do you need to revisit your costing model um, you know, um, you know, so that you can, you can kind of think about, you know, how to fit them into the, um, um, you know, how to fit them in. Um, the question there, Kenny, there's a question, does affording a distributor only come down to whether you can handle the margin they need or whether there are other costs or are there other, other, are there other costs to account for? That seems like a question we should answer right now. Is it Affording just want to come down to whether. Do me a favor, Biggie. Can you can you tell me what tell me, just give me a broader. Uh, just hop on and ask it. Yeah, yeah just trying yeah. to figure out where you're going because it's it's. So we just recently signed on to a distributor, and yeah. for the most part, apart from the margin they need, uh, they haven't really required anything else from us. There are no contracts. Um, they've been talking to country grocer on the island for us. Are there any other costs such as like a monthly fee or anything we should be wary of in the future? It it depends on, on you, it's a distributor you've talked to, right? Yes, yes, yeah. Okay, so let's say for country grocer. Country grocer right now is probably asking for the most part, and I think they're getting less, it's getting less to negotiate. They're asking for, I think, $1,000 per SKU listing fee, for example, right? Now I don't think I don't know if you have if it's if it's a cash listing fee still or you could do it in free goods. So the question would be is who's covering that? It, within your discussions sure. with your distributor, uh, we haven't asked for a listing fee the right now. Uh, I'm sorry, Biggie. Oh, said I was just going to say we haven't asked for any listing fees right now, so that's why I was curious. So, but hmm. I think that's the stuff I always tell yeah. people, like especially when you're picking, is all those questions. Before you sit down and choose, to me, it would be those are the questions you need to ask and say, listen, you know, you're 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 this is a great deal. You're saying that it's a 20 percent margin is all you're looking for. I'm doing cartwheels thinking, shit, this is this is awesome. It's only 20 points. Right. And then this, then the shit starts rolling. Hey, you know what? Country grocer needs a thousand dollars a skew. And you're looking, thinking. Oh, are you telling me or are you asking me? I didn't really budget for the four thousand dollars because I have four SKUs. Now you got to figure that part out. Hey, country grocer wants one an ad. They want it, you know, twenty percent MCB or twenty percent scan back. Hopefully it's a scan because I, I hate MCBs. But let's say it's, let's say it's an MCB. Are you ready for it? I thought you were going to cover it. Like those are the questions you really need to make sure you do. Some distributors charge twenty percent. I'm going to tell you right now, for twenty percent, you are not getting a hell of a lot of anything. You are going to get a box mover, for the most part because they can't operate their businesses on 20%, not in like, especially in the lower mainland between rents, taxes, all the other shit that goes around the business at running a 20%, that's a very lean distributor, which means it's probably lean in the offerings. Doesn't have to be, but I'm going to say probably if your distributor's charging 30, 35 and 40, and you're having a heart attack as you're thinking, I can't do this. Well, maybe they are covering your listing fees. Maybe they're covering the MCVs. Maybe it's because they have a sales person of 10 people that you can actually work with. Again, I don't know who it is. I don't know the question, but this is why Phil and I are very cognizant and we tell people, really make sure you know what you're asking for or what you need. If you need predominantly a box mover, you go to a distributor, that's who moves boxes, but then ask the other questions. Who's selling? Who's paying for all this? Do you guys cover anything? And some will, some won't. 
right? And big country gross is a classic example because it depends on who you're dealing with. Let's say you're dealing with Lane, you're going to get a thousand dollars a skew. Most likely is about the charges, right? You're going to get special costs because they consider themselves a distributor, even though they distribute to their own stores, which conceptually I have no idea how that works, but that's a whole different argument. But do you know what I mean? So there's that. And then I have to know, like, are you going to help me with MCD? Like if we do a scan back, let's say they want a dollar. Will you do 50 and I do 50? Or do I have to do the whole dollar? Like, because I need to know it. I need to balance my world too, right? That's why I wanted you to ask it because it's hard to, like, I know what you're asking, but I don't know the context of it. And that's like, that's what you ask is very specific, but I think that it applies to all of them. I just need no. to know what you're going to do for me. Yeah, no, that itself was very helpful. I appreciate that. Thank you. No, you're very welcome. Hopefully it answered something. It did. It did. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Okay, so now that you've got these um, pieces, you've got these questions you're asking, you can go out and start talking to brokers and distributors. If you have a partner already, um, great. Um, the other half of this maybe is going to be- Maybe just recheck it. Maybe is it the right partner? That's right. You, right. you should definitely recheck it. We have had these conversations Numerous. and then we've had brands show up and go, hang on a second, what do I do now? I, I think I picked the wrong person. Um, you know, so so definitely. Well, we that... just had one about six weeks ago. That's right. Picked the wrong person. I said, "That's great." So, did you, like, what's the arrangement? She goes, "Well, we signed a contract." I said, "Well, what does the contract say?" And then yeah. you're thinking, one second, two second. Okay, so we didn't really read the contract. Send me the contract. Let's see what the contract <laughs> said. And then you're reading the contract, thinking, "Wow, this almost sounds like an exclusivity agreement for a year, and we're in month three. Shoot. Hmm. Oh, shoot. So oh, shoot. I don't know. Are they penalties to get out of the next nine months? Is it yeah. really read that way? So again, yeah. the due diligence up front to all the questions to make sure you know what you're signing. Because at this point, when Phil's doing this here, have the partner, have the distributor ready to go, you know, talk to me inadvertently, look at it. So I think it's the first off, I think it's the wrong partner. Here's the reasons why. Here's why I think these four people would be better for your commodity. And then it was the panic button hit. And I thought, this is not a panic. It's just a reset. Think it through. Yeah. Go back, ask the basic questions, right? You're in the category of soft drinks. Your guys predominantly produce. Yes, they're a distributor. Yes, they can move those boxes. But to Phil's point before, are they talking to the right people? Are they with the right buyers? Do they really know that side of the world? Do they have any contacts on that side? Do they do your brand justice, et cetera, et cetera? So like I always say here, just because even this part, you have them picked, is it the right pick? Please go back and ask the questions just to make sure. Sort of what you're going to have to do now, Biggie, is go, kind of go back and say, okay, this is great, but what did I really, what, what do I, what's this handshake really work? What, what am I getting out of it? What do I owe out of it? And you may walk out of it and say, you know what? I understand it. I'm still good with this one. This is a really good fit for me. I'm going to do this. Light it up, baby. Set, it. Go. Why not? There's um and, and that's a good segue because the the other half of this is tools that you need to give a broker slash a distributor to be effective, right? So um and and you know, Viggy, like what as you go back, some of these things will also sweat out some of those things in there. Um so it'll help you understand what they are, right? So um key assumptions on the side. Um we said this earlier and we're gonna say it again. Assume that you will care more about your business than anyone ever will. Um, and assume that you're the best salesperson um, and the team that you choose can only be as good as you equip them to be. Um, and the reason for that is you, you've you now, if you've picked a broker, you've picked someone to be your voice um, in the marketplace, right? But they will only have your voice if they actually understand your product. And they will only have your voice if you teach them what the voice sounds like. Otherwise, they will sound like them, right? Um, and so... You know, in a world where um, almost every broker out there um, covers, you know, at least five to 10 brands, you need you need those people to sound like you and not read something off a piece of paper. Right. And so um, and the same with the distributor, someone who moves boxes um, training them is, is a big deal. Um, having them as uh, brand ambassadors on the inside is a great is a great thing. And then most distributors that have sales teams also need this training. So once you've signed on with a partner, there's a whole bunch of things that you need to kind of work your way through. One, education, you need to train them. Product knowledge 101, I would say product knowledge 101 all year round. So don't train them once and then walk away. Um, again, remember that they, they probably got 
10, 15, 20 brands that they're repping at the same time. So the more you're in their faces, the more they're going to know who you are, the more they're going to keep, you're going to be able to reinforce the consumer messaging that you give. Um, and then you're going to want to outline consumer benefits and retailer benefits um, so that they're always thinking about those things, right? Um, with that, training comes all sorts of things. Um, it could be, um, you know, a, a little PowerPoint presentation or, or a, a Canva presentation that helps them, you know, walk out with a college knowledge deck. It might be a brochure. It might be both. It might be a postcard. It might be a handout. It could be kind of like a million little things. It could be email reminders. Um, if your um, partner won't kill you for sending an email to them every month, kind of reminding them of, here's who we are, you know, here's a, um, here's something that you're going to be thinking about. So just when you think you're really done, you're, you're not, you're just getting started. Right. Um, you also want to make sure that as you do your marketing with your marketing team, that while you're doing consumer marketing, you're thinking about trade marketing. So you're thinking about these retailers and what a retailer needs. Right. So, um, do you have a, retailer portal. Um, so if a store wants to go in and get images to post on social media, or the store wants to find a recipe, is your website good enough for them to go to to find that stuff? Or can you direct them to an internal like a Google, it could be as simple as a Google Drive, that's open to retailers. So retailers can go in and grab the pieces that or they open need to your broker slash distributor, it even doesn't have to be retail to Phil's point. Yeah, as long as somebody has access to the to the to the collateral that you're trying to share yeah. like because it's a broker distributor it, it's really them do they have the ability to get this without bothering you i guess even phil yeah. right i mean because at the end of the day you otherwise you're back to doing it yourself i mean have this stuff ready and available and accessible because these are the people that are going to be in yeah. front of people and say that's great but i have a flyer next week can i get a picture but you don't want them yeah. looking like a deer in the headlights thinking shit i yeah probably uh -huh. Look, there's nothing worse than waking up to a flyer and then seeing last year's packaging or two years ago in that flyer. Okay. Like everybody knows it, right? You, you all like, I, I'm sure whoever doesn't have their camera is smiling and also like shaking their fist at the same time. It happens to all of us. Right. But these are the guys that can help you fix some of those things, right? They can be the ones. So you just got to make sure. But again, it's one of these things where you go, great. I hired someone. I'm, you know, this one's, this one's one and done. You're going, no, this this requires they require updates. You gotta you gotta keep them. Now, we're also, um, you know, you're gonna get into conversations that help you kind of understand who these folks are. Um, there are, you know, as you work through incentives, right? Because um, if you have a broker um, and they're going out, maybe you can run, you know, a sales incentive, so a spiff, right? So um, sell a bunch of stuff, you know, like if you can sell in, um, you know. A case, three cases of something for a display. Maybe you get a set of golf balls. I'm, I always use golf balls as the example. Everyone loves getting free stuff, right? So what are the incentives allowed to do, right? And then so Viggy, like with, with your guy now, you're, the conversation is, how does this work? Do you, are your people incented by giving a spiff, right? What if I come in and do product knowledge and I give away free shirts? You'd be surprised how many people love free shirts, right? Um, so you kind of need to learn what makes these guys fired up, right? Because I'm competing now. I signed on, but I'm competing with 20 other brands for brain space in a sales rep's mind. So what do I do that takes up as much of that space as possible, right? That's what I'm trying to do. So that way, when they go in, all they're doing is they're talking about my stuff, right? Yes, yay for everybody else, but I want my stuff, right? So I want you to be talking about my stuff. So all of those things, incentive contests, those sort of things, what can I do um, that that kind of makes everything go right. Give them the power um, to go in and be able to incentivize their team as well as the retailer. When they go in and say, "Hey, Mr. Retailer, I've got coupons that I can put on your shelf. We can run a contest. We can run a demo. We can run a display incentive. Whatever it is, because again, it's all the stuff that they need to get. Remember, because the store, if they if the broker distributor has 10, 15, 20 brands, the store is running on fifty thousand SKUs. Mm -hmm. Now you're into that. We're trying to get that mindset your brokerage distributors can get you closer to the front of the line if you can provide sometimes simple things like like that, like whether it's a demo mm -hmm. swag, a display mm -hmm. contest, whatever. Again, the challenge with all this is cost, right? 
And this is why we always refer back, go back to your costing model because a broker costs, a distributor costs, this all costs. Everything costs something in retail. But if you want to be effective, you have to sort of build some of these in. It doesn't have to be all. You don't have to do any of these. It could be strictly product training. It could yeah. be going out with the sales team if they will allow you, see how they sell your product, and then maybe you highlight, listen, this is important to me to rattle off these three points. Train them to talk like you, like Phil said. That's what this is about. They are your voice. And again, you may find that at the end of the day, there is no fit in this planet and you have to do all this. I should have helped open up, but it could come down to that. But again, just really understand they're not going to do what you want them to do unless you tell them what you want them to do. And I think okay. that's the most important thing to get at anything out of this yeah. is that nobody runs on autopilot. They don't know what you're thinking. They don't yeah. know what you want. You need to really, really go out and tell them. Um, okay. And then I'm going to get to the last slide because we're, we're kind of tight on time. And I want to make sure we have time for questions. Um, the last one is, what is um, a regular ongoing discussion with broker or a distributor look like or sound like? Um, some key assumptions on the side, make sure you listen a lot because um, the partner that you pick will have good ideas or should have good ideas, right? And um, if they don't, because... then that's another flag. <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's another flag for sure. And then I would ask lots of questions, right? Um, you know, because they are out there, they have people out okay. there, um, they're talking to stores, the stores will feed. And, and then sometimes you're going to have to, you you know, there's always those things like it could be cheaper. It could be, you know, could I give away lots of stuff? Could I put it on sale all the time? Some of those things that as a brand, you might go, listen, I'm, I'm just fine. Those are normal sales things. But um, you're going to be tuning into things like, hey, your, your product's hard to understand or people don't understand the product or people don't understand or people can't find it or the sales reps don't know what SKUs are more important than other SKUs. Those are things that you can action and and like learn to kind of tweak right in your product education and the things you do so make sure that you um make sure you're kind of asking lots of questions and then the other one we put in here is don't get distracted or pulled off track so um your your partner will have lots of brands they have their own motivations for how they go to store just make sure that as you're partnering with them and thinking about great ideas that your volume is is kind of like number one on your list right is you know because partners Will kind of go hey i want to build this or i'm I'm thinking about and you're going that's great what does that mean for me you got 20 brother brands that you can ask you know to help you know not to be a jerk but like how am i going to get volume out of this okay um on the other side um i we talked about some of this is make sure that you use them to learn about your business so ask lots of questions things that your partners may not know but could out go out and ask right so um, a really common question that I encourage every brand to ask their partners is like, what is your market share, right? Like if you're a little brand, you can't get that stuff, right? Like unless you want to pay like a million dollars in Nielsen, you could never get that number. But in a in a store or in a set of stores, you could get some significant markers on, hey, you're you're actually like a top tier brand for us, right? You're 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 kind of like number two or number three, or you're always behind the number one brand, but we see you as the number two or number three choice, for example, right? Um, like all of those things are important to you because it allows you to keep calibrating the way you run the brand and what you think about. Um, be prepared to have regular conversations with them. So again, you, you get a partner, you want to talk to them, like the weekly doesn't need to be a significant, it could be, um, you know, hey, how are things going? Like what's slow? What's not slow? Um, you know, um, do, do they get point of sale data that they can share with you? Um, are they seeing margin or profitability challenges? Um, I have a, I have a, a brand that I work with in the pet space. And right now, um, pet is in a weird space because everybody else in CPG has experienced declines. Pet is in its kind of first year of declines. So pet people are panicking, uh, while the rest of CPG is kind of chuckling a little because we, we all feel soft and then pet people are wondering why the world is soft and we're kind of going it's your first year relax you'll be fine right um but in there we're asking those questions right is so we're soft so what are banners doing to do that are they are they going to take down pricing are they shifting 
away from premium brands and going down to commodity stuff, you know, you know, so they can sell more, but to a high margin brand or a high retail brand, that would be an issue, right? So but all I those things, that, what's that? Sorry, Phil. I, yeah. I think this is one thing we, when you, again, to get the most out of, if you need to have a lot of discussions with your broker and distributor, one, could be weekly, could be monthly, I don't care what it is, but on those times, if they don't have POS or don't have a feel and all they know is factory sales, your sales in, well, I know that too. I don't need you to tell me that. So for me, if I'm asking a broker or distributor, they can't answer some of these things or have no access. I go back to the previous slides. Is this flag. the right person? Flag. Yeah. This is flags, yeah. right? You know, how are they doing? What are the concerns? If it's the usual, well, everybody's saying, well, that's bullshit. Everybody, not everybody's saying that. Who's saying that? Why are they saying that? When did you ask that last? Like, I want details from, from the people I work with. Like Phil and I, you know, we do a brand together. We have a distributor. I talk to the sales team there once a week, high level sometimes, and then other times much more specific. I ask for my sales data. I want to know who you're selling to. And not because I'm going to go in and take the account. I want to know. I want to know why Nature Fair hasn't ordered in three months. Why? Is it on the shelf? Are they out of stock? Do they hate me? Do they hate you? We're like, well, what's like, what's the flag? Oh, they never sold the, or any of the first order. Well, shit. When are you going to tell me that? Can we do something? Can I help out? I mean, I want, I, this is the stuff I mm. want from my distributor or broker. But the only way I get that, I have to go at them. I have to ask. I have to be involved in it. You know, I have to, like we said, be prepared to check and support them, my partners. But that means that you have to be with them. You have to be talking to them. Mm -hmm. Again, weekly might be an extreme. Come on, we're not talking unless we're talking, you know, we're, we're just distributing milk or chips and we're nationwide. Yeah, you might get weekly meetings when you're doing one or two SKUs. You're not going to get that. But I don't think a monthly quick update or a quarterly is way out of the question. And I would be flagged if someone wasn't going to spend a, that sort of time with me. Right. And that's what these all become down to is keep motivated, keep on it. The last one is is the one Phil and I always go back to is if you can't get proper answers or you're not sure, it's the trust but verify. I'll trust Biggie that you know, you know what you're telling me, but you know what? It's a little high level. I'm not quite sure. I think you might be a little bit full of it. I'm going to check. And then I may go out and ask. And you need to do that with your distributors and brokers to make sure that you are getting what you want out of them. And it always comes back to the assumptions. Remember, the best sales person and the one who gives the most care about your brand is you do not expect it to be them they will support you they are going to be partners but it's it has to work for them which means you also have to be an active participant in this with them okay so we're kind of we're at the end here and i i'm rushing a little bit because we've, we're a little short on time like um I, we, we talked a lot through this <laughs> um i left a little summary in here um, but if, if you want more help, you can, you can definitely talk to us, ask us, um, you can find us at thiscommercelife.com and then Kenny and my emails are down there below as well. Um, this, this, um, I think Sumner is going to send Sumner out this anyway, as well, so you'll have it. Um, oh, there you go. but, um, I, I think, so Kenny, we, we said we'd go back cause I said, I remember. So Jill had a question about suggestions for a good broker for national expansion and Liang wants one for for um gas station and convenience store i think we're probably missing a couple of dimensions there no like kenny i know i'm thinking oh, okay it, it's hard i mean again do you have some like it, Sorry, to, so to name somebody i probably don't have a name of any I mean, there's the usual suspects that, that call on gas and convenience. There's people, there's distributors that call on them. It doesn't mean that they're the greatest distributor, the best distributor for you. It really depends on what you have and what you're trying to do. Yeah. Like and Liang, on supplements, what, what kind of better products? Brokers. Yeah. Like for, for Liang and because um, maybe what is more useful here is we can go back and, and send you some suggestions, Jill and Liang. And Michelle, but these sense um, specifically what you have, what the product is, where are you now, where are you thinking? Because otherwise, yeah, yeah sure, Wallace and Kerry does um, convenience and gas. Uh, Pratt probably does convenience and gas. Mm -hmm. 
But mm -hmm. if you want to be in Ontario, Quebec, I have no idea. Hmm. But it doesn't mean you can't find Produce it. Department. Okay. Well, yeah. yeah. Got it. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We'll, we'll, so why don't, we'll, we'll pull some of those aside and then um, Jill and Liang in particular, we'll make sure we, we kind of um, address, and Michelle, we'll, we'll kind of, we'll send you some suggestions. Or just ping us and we can maybe, yeah, yeah we can try to help yeah. you out as best we can. Yeah. Yeah. Um, are there, before we go, are there any, we've got like four minutes. Are there any other questions you guys have? Or concerns or something you want to? Yeah. Anything we didn't cover that you were hoping to see? Okay. Okay. Awesome. Um, guys, thank you so much. Um, we Thanks really for taking the time with us. I know it's time yeah. it's an hour that you won't get back. Yeah. Hopefully it wasn't the most painful hour you've had in a while, but we'll blame Phil. Sure. I accept. <laughs> well, it's usually me. So I just once in a while want to pass it to someone else. Sumner and Phil pick on me a lot. We do. It's fun. It is fun. <laughs> awesome. Well, if there is no other questions, then we will close it out here. Um, if any other questions do come up, please feel free to, to reach out to our team and we can get you connected with Phil and Kenny, or you can also reach out to them directly, I'm yeah. sure. Yeah, um, no yeah. And so thank you so much for attending today. And thank you, Phil and Kenny, as always, for a wonderful presentation and um yeah that was a lot of good information Hopefully it helps, there. right so. totally yeah yeah you guys always provide great uh content and information so really appreciate that and i will be sending out a follow-up email um that will include the slide deck a survey and then any other kind of resources that um that you'll need as well as the recording so on that note, we will end it here. And again, thank you so much, Phil and Kenny. And thank you everyone for joining us. No, thanks, thanks guys. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Thank you. You're welcome.